Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. Today, liturgically speaking at least, we are going to celebrate the Feast of Corpus Christi, which was actually held on this Thursday of this week, but due to it being Sunday, we're going to celebrate it today. As a result, my sermon is based upon the gospel appointed for this day, coming to us from the sixth chapter of the Gospel of St. John, which I will read to you right now. At that time, Jesus said unto the multitude of the Jews, My flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is the bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna, and are dead. He that eateth up this bread shall live forever. Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. My dear friends in our Lord Jesus Christ, as I stated just a moment ago, of course, Corpus Christi is actually celebrated on the Thursday again of this week, but we are transferring it, if you will, to Sunday so that we will be able to celebrate it with the congregation. In my opinion, and again, I'm speaking for myself, the reason for doing this is because this Feast of Corpus Christi, in my opinion, is of utmost importance to the world, to the church, to you and I as individuals, to all of us, to the world. Why? Because again, the Feast of Corpus Christi is celebrating the body and blood of our blessed Savior. As I've stated in the past and as I will continue to state over and over and over again, if I was forced, if you were forced, in my humble opinion, if we were forced to pick one chapter out of the book of Holy Scripture of utmost importance, and of course it's all important, it's Holy Scripture. But just for the sake of the argument, if we would be forced to choose only one chapter, I would dare say, the sixth chapter of the Gospel of St. John would fit that bill. It would be the chapter that we can focus on, that we can learn from. For you see, dear friends, as I've done in the past, I have called this sixth chapter of the Gospel of St. John a love letter. A love letter written by God to his children. And I state that again because it, it, it is in this sixth chapter and I urge all of you, those of you who are hearing this video, those of you who are listening to me, sometime today, please take your Bibles off the shelf, take out your Bibles and read the sixth chapter of the Gospel of St. John. Read it, meditate upon it, and pray. And I think you'll soon see exactly what I'm talking about. But again, getting back to my sermon, the reason why I state that, that this is a love letter written by God to his children, because again, the emphasis is on the body and blood of our blessed Savior. In other words, he is giving of himself when he talks about his body and blood. 
And while you read this sixth chapter, while you read through the sixth chapter, you will see that there were many who were disciples of our blessed Lord who could not hear these words. And in fact, some who walked away after this. Here's what I'm talking about. In verse 60 of the sixth chapter, some of the disciples murmured, this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? Meaning, well, listen to what he's saying. Can you hear what he's saying? Listen to what he's saying. Who, who can listen to this? Who can take it? And in fact, six verses later in verse 66, again, it states, From that time, many of the disciples went back and walked no more with him. Why? Because they could not imagine that our blessed Lord was saying the things that he was saying. And as a result, they wanted nothing to do with him. Now, why is this? Because bear in mind, dear friends, for those who were Jewish, for those who were raised in the Jewish tenets, for those who were raised in the Jewish faith, again, blood is, if you will, the life force. If we look at the Old Testament book of Leviticus, chapter 17, verse 11, it says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood. And then moving on to verse 14 of that same chapter. For it is the life of all flesh. For the life of all flesh is the blood thereof. This is why, dear friends, it was not allowed for Jews to eat of any animal or any meat product, if you will, that contained blood. The blood had to be drained away. This is why. And so here, fast forward to our blessed Lord again, stating, This is my blood, and my blood is drink indeed, and my flesh is meat indeed. Going back to this verse that I just read to you from verse 17, do you dare say that again our blessed Savior was emphasizing this fact because he understood fully well that his blood indeed was life itself. And as a result, he knew exactly what he was talking about. He knew exactly what he was saying because again, dear friends, he was giving of himself to feed us, to nourish us, to sustain us, to fortify us, he was giving of himself. Last week, I, I had the great honor, and I do use those words specifically, I had the great honor to celebrate a Mass for a longtime member who had passed away and his family contacted me and asked if I would do the, the funeral and of course I said yes. And it was in that talk because at those times you, you never know what to say again. You just depend on God quite frankly. But it was when I began speaking I reflect on the fact that the man who had passed away had been a teacher for the majority of his life. And I understood full well, I commend, contended. I know full well and understand full well because I come from a sort of a teaching family, if, if you will. My mother, God rest her, she was a teacher. My father was a teacher. My grandmothers were a teacher. My stepmother is a teacher. 
and I like to think of myself as a teacher of sorts, both in my secular job as a counselor to the Department of Corrections, to the juveniles, and then also in my capacity here. But I made the point that Teachers give of themselves in the regard that they pass along knowledge that they have. They share experiences that they have had. They, they pass along to their students knowledge and understanding and conveying a way of understanding and knowing that comes from here. And they convey wanting to learn. I also tie it in the fact that, again, God, our Heavenly Father, sent forth His only Son into the world to save us from our sins. And as we are speaking about today, of course, our blessed Lord Himself gives of His flesh and His blood for meat and drink to nourish us, to sustain us. And then it's very apropos, if, if you don't mind me saying so, but today as I record this short sermon for you is June 6th, which of course we, we remember the D-Day, what's called the D-Day invasion, which was the beginning of the end of World War II. And in that D-Day invasion, so many young soldiers who were involved in that storming of the beaches at Normandy and so forth, they went to their death. They gave their all. They gave everything they had, their very life. The point that I'm making, dear friends, is this. When we give a gift to someone, a gift so special, we give of ourself to the other person that we love. We give something of ourself, of our very being, that is important to us. We give either be we give of our time. We give something valuable that we possess. The bottom line is this exactly is what our blessed Lord did. He gave of himself the most important thing that he could give. He gave of himself. This is why we hear in verse 58, this is that bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. If, again, an analogy again, and analogies always lack, and it's certainly, of course, this analogy would certainly lack, but let me just put, put this out to you for your consideration. If we're planning to have a party or something or, or a dinner, you might just go to the store and get some chips or get something already made or whatever and say, I, I, you know what, I don't have time to deal with this. I, you know what, I, I'm just going to go to Subway and I'm going to get some of those sandwiches already made and, and I'm going to cut them into pieces and everybody can serve themselves in a, a bag of Doritos and again I'll open the bag and then just reach in there and grab a handful. There, there, you'll be good. How much care and consideration are you showing? You're just doing the bare minimum in other words. But yet contrast that if you will to someone that you hold to be of great importance. You love dearly someone who is special to you. And so you invite that person or those people to your home for dinner. And just the opposite is what I just described. You go to great care. You go to great lengths of making sure that you have something special prepared for them. 
And in addition to preparing a meal, you, you make sure your house is good. You make sure everything is in good shape. You, you clean everything thoroughly and make sure everything is in place. And then when your guests arrive again, you, you make sure that they have everything that they need, that they are comfortable, that they, that they are satisfied, that they are taken care of and looked after. In a certain sense, again, this is our blessed Lord giving of himself. He wanted to give us the very best. And so, he gave of himself, his precious body, his precious blood. This is why, again, as I just read to you from that verse, he compares and contrasts with the fathers that ate manna in the desert. Manna was good, but our Lord was making the point that his body, his blood is infinite times better. And so he gives the best because he loves us. He loves you and he loves me so much. And as a result, we should always again remember our blessed Savior loves us so much that he gives the very best. He gives of himself to nourish us, to sustain us, to fortify us, to satisfy us. So often in the world, we try to go after the things of the world to nourish us, to sustain us. And each and every time, we find that we're still hungry, we're still searching. We still want something else. With our Lord, He is the one that is going to satisfy us. He is the one, again, that cares for us and loves us. And we, for our part, should spend our time looking for Him longing for him, having a relationship with him instead of having a relationship with the world and things of the world. So this day, dear friends, on this feast, as we celebrate this feast of Corpus Christi, let us again thank God for all the blessings it bestows upon us. Let us thank God and make a point to thank God for the gift that he gives the greatest gift of all, the gift of his son to the world and the gift of his precious body and blood. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, God bless you, dear friends.